Hello everyone, Game Data 1010 here, and I'm here to show you the first part of this tutorial for making Minecraft inside a graphing calculator. So in this first part of the tutorial, we're going to be learning how to make a 3D scene as well as make a movable environment with a camera and correct projections and everything. You're going to be, by the end of this tutorial, you should be able to have a 3D scene where you can move around in the X, Y, and Z direction, but also be able to look around in any direction by adjusting the different parameters for your camera. All right, enough about what you should be able to do. Let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing that you need to be able to do is you need to have your viewport. So what is a viewport? So the viewport is anything that you can see within the screen. Now we want to be able to normalize this for every single viewer. So having this area is not a good idea, but also we want something that's easily, something that is easy to code into. So the standard is to have a viewport that starts at zero and ends at one for both the X and the Y direction. Now if you notice, these squares are no longer squares, but they're more rectangles. We're going to get into how to fix that in a bit, but for now we're just going to lock the viewport so that we cannot move our graph. Another thing that we might want to do is remove the grid so that we are no longer confined to thinking in the 2D space, but more about thinking in a 3D space. Next part we're going to do is we're going to generate some points. So I'm just going to have four points labeled P1, P2, P3, and P4. And we're going to give, and now Desmos doesn't allow a 3D point. If I put that in, it'll say a point that's only allowed to have two coordinates. So what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the fact that uh, Desmos has lists. In order to do that, you just use the square brackets, and then you can put as many of them if you as you want in here. Just make sure you don't type in like a triple comma, like I did. So you can see, if we really wanted to, we could have a, a five-dimensional space. But we're not going to do that. We're going to stick with three dimensions. So I'm going to set these three points. All right, so we have our four points. And to make things nice, we're just going to put it in a folder, and we're going to label it points. Now that we have all our points nicely tucked away in this folder, we're going to get onto the camera. So I'm going to make another folder for the camera. And in here, for our camera, we're going to make a position. So I'm going to call that C pause. To make it a slider like what you did in the beginning, I'm going to make it X, Y, and Z. And add sliders for each of those. Now we can have our camera move around like that. Next up for our camera is that we need to set a limit to how far things should be rendered and how close things should be rendered. And this is called the clipping plane. So I'm going to label that as CP. And this is just going to be 0 0.1. And let's go with 100. So everything within 0 0.1 to 100 distance is going to be rendered in this rectangle. Next, we need to set our field of vision. So I'm going to do FOV, and I'm going to set that to 90. And we're going to be working in degrees here. All right, and then next, I'm going to get another variable, and we're going to call it aspect. And this is going to be the aspect ratio. So the aspect ratio is your actual screen on uh, not Desmos, but the actual physical properties of your screen in the dimensions. So the aspect ratio is your width divided by your height. What you're going to do is you're going to take a screenshot and you're going to go from your top corner all the way down to your bottom corner. And your top corner is not going to be this part of the Desmos, but it's going to be the top part of your graph. Once you have that, you want to make sure that you go over to your screenshot and just make 
this is a chance to make sure that you really have your dimensions correct. So you can go over here and you can notice there's a tiny bit open. So we're going to crop that out. There's a tiny bit over here. All right. And then we're just going to save that. And then next up, we need to go over to our image. So here we have our screenshot right here. And we're going to right click and then go to properties and details. And then right here, you get the width and then the height. So, and then next up, we're going to have our rotation. So I'm just going to put this as C rote. And then again, set that to an array, and we're going to have it so that we can do sliders. So we're going to do alpha, beta, and phi. And then make the sliders for all of those. And then those are going to go from 0 to 360. Next up for this last part of the camera folder, we're going to do something to... We're going to have a variable that we can use for our render applications. So it's I'm just going to call it f and f is 1 over the tangent of your field of view divided by 2. Now that's pretty simple and then once we have all of that we are done with the camera for now and we can move on to the render. All right, for this part of the render folder it's going to be it's going to be a little complicated, but this is the projection equation. And the reason why it's a bit complicated is because technically we're not dealing with regular math and we're dealing with linear algebra. And the way that I can convert linear algebra over to Desmos without using their linear algebra calculator, because example, you can't use the determinant function here, is I just manually go ahead and put it together. Now you see that this is very, uh, very uh, whack, you could say. So I'm going to call this pro project, and then we take in a point P, and then there. This projects the point onto our 2D graph. And then next up, in order to view the points, uh, we need another equation. And this equation here, very simple. It's just your points and then point one, point two, and then plus one over two. You put these together in a function called draw, which draw will take in a point and it will take that point and it will view it from the projection of that point. Now we got all our points, but you might be thinking it's just one point. Well, the reason for that is we haven't moved. But if we try to move, we notice nothing's changing. That's because we need to move our points according to our camera. So we need to go ahead and take our camera position and then subtract it from each of our points. So if we go ahead and do that for each of our points, and then we try to move, Let's try moving back out. We start to see all our other points. If we move up, we can see our points. But you may think, hey, those are just points. That's not a 3D object like before. Well, you're in luck. What we can do is we can draw a triangle. A triangle, simply, you can connect three points. So let's make a function called try. And we take an P1, P2, and P3. And then very simply, we just do polygon between each of these points. So draw, and then P1. P2 and P3. And now, if we try drawing them, and now we have three different triangles right here and with all the respective viewpoints.
So we have these three equations for rotating y, x, and z. And we have it applied z first, then x, then y. And they are all linked to our variables alpha, beta, and phi. So now if we go over to our camera and we remove alpha and beta and phi. But still right now if we try to move our sliders they don't adjust. And that's because we need to apply our rotation. Now our rotation should apply first. So it should be rotation first, then projection, then viewing. So let's go ahead and do that. We do rot and then we do root to p and then finally we're able to look down and up and left and well right and then even rotate around like that which I think is pretty cool thank you all for watching and I hope to see you next time and next time we should be going over more about meshes instead of just cameras. So again, thank you all for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day.